Don't. I'm you. Oh my god. That's Christina. That's her crash car. Thank Done. you. Intro's over. <laughs> All right, so from the look of this chassis, the impact came from pretty much this direction, as you can see by everything pushed over this one. So it hit a wall that wasn't moving. Concrete. Concrete. No tires. No tires, very bare wall. Took a huge hit on the driver's side front corner. When it did this, it put all of this energy into the chassis leg, trying to bend the chassis leg all the way over to the side. You have to take it off the track. Okay. So we'll go into depth and show a little bit more about the cage and how the cage held this thing in this shape, even though the shape's not great, it would have been 10 times worse if we didn't have a cage or the cage coming through the firewall. So we have a post that goes from the shock tower to the dash bar of the cage. And as you can see from this hit, it took a very hard hit going this way. The shock tower wanted to go towards the engine in the shock tower being attached to a part of the cage tried to move it over, but it was resistant. This is all great, by the way, because what it actually does, it absorbs a lot of energy. It slows everything down, so it doesn't become such a bigger impact to the driver, because all of these things become like a crumple zone. It's basically as if you fell off you know, the, the floor and hit the ground hard, it hurts. But if you fall into a bed, the bed absorbs the impact and it doesn't hurt. It's much like the same thing, except we're crushing pieces of steel, and that's why you have all these wrinkled sections. It just absorbs energy. It's, you know, it, it takes the force, it starts to crush, it slows everything down so it's not a direct hit. It's no different than taking a hammer, hitting a piece of steel hard, it just bounces off of it. But if you hit, let's say, sand or dirt, it's a different impact. It, obviously, it's completely different. So in this case, so the dash bar, which is all part of the cage, goes to the shock tower after that. But because this pipe was attached to the shock tower, and the shock tower essentially was trying to rip off going towards the passenger side of the car and trying to bend this tube, it, the energy went into the dash bar. And as you can see, the dash bar itself, which is DOM tubing, started to bend. So imagine if this car did not have this structure in here, this tower would have had to withstand all of the energy that this 2,800 pound force hit a wall and pushed everything into this corner. Essentially, this tower probably would have been over considerably further because there would have been nothing else to try and brace it to stop it from all collapsing. So now we can look at the rest of this. So it's probably a good idea for us to always, or for people to build cages yeah, with. when you're building cages, don't skimp on it. Don't say, oh, I'll, you know, I don't need that piece because it's only for making the car stiffer or faster. It's not. There are all these pieces serve a purpose. They're all in there to stop the drivers from getting hurt. This car was a beautiful car and in an instant, because of whatever happened on the racetrack, it all went to crap. And, you know, the safety cage did its job. The driver's still here holding the camera right now. Hi. And, hi. <laughs> and because of this safety cage, we can still talk to her. So when you're doing a cage, don't just think, I need the bare minimum and that's it. Think about your life. Think about how important living, walking, and all the other things are to you. And maybe you should spend the extra 500 bucks to go through the firewall or... You know, whatever else, the door bars. Don't skimp on door bars. Don't skimp on anything in the cage, to be quite honest with you. Because later on in life, when you're limping around because you decided to save 500 bucks, you'll think to yourself, wow, I should, really should have went to the shock tower because it's not just for me going faster. It actually saves my life. <laughs> so it's probably the one reason I was able to get out of the car after right. I hit the wall and then right. run away from the whole thing. So now, if you can camera lady, come around okay. this way. We'll see in the driver's area, we also have footwell protection. So what this does is the wheel, which gets pushed back in this accident, tries to come through the firewall. As you can see by the firewall being all deformed here, you have lots of energy going this way. The wheel, the tire, everything all came into this way. This footwell protection stops the floor from collapsing in and coming towards the driver. As you can see, the impact was still great enough that the transmission tunnel has a huge wrinkle in it because the force, the energy has to go somewhere when you put that much force on it. So you're just trying to dissipate the energy to slow it down to stop the driver who's sitting in this area from getting hurt. Now, we use a different method of mounting seats. We don't use the standard, you know, bolt your seat down to whatever brackets, blah, blah, blah. We actually make something that's very similar to a roll cage for your seat mounts. It's welded to the chassis, you know, in four points. It's a very strong structure made of heavyweight steel. This way, we don't have to worry about the seat, factory seat brackets wanting to break off of this. It's not likely to happen, but it's not impossible either. So you have this structure, essentially, which the seat mounts to. It's a very rigid structure. 
stops the seat from doing anything. It's also because of what it's made of. It stops some of the side intrusion if the car took a huge hit in the driver's section. Now, the car did take a secondary hit in the back. So here's our main hoop. And if you look on the passenger side where it hasn't been hit, the main hoop and the post have a space. But now, if you look at the driver's side, the main hoop and the quarter panel have met each other. So you had a huge energy pushed into the side. So all this force again went into the side of the car. The cage did its job, it stopped everything from going any further. In this cage, it's a little bit different than your standard cage. Back this way. Oh, no, you can yeah. We have an FIA style diagonal brace. Here. Your standard cage has one diagonal that goes this way. This one has two diagonals that comes this way. It essentially braces this side of the cage to stop any of the cage from deforming from a huge impact right here. So again, people see it and not really think much of it. It's, you know, they might think it's just for rollovers. No, it's for rollovers, but it also has a lot to do with what happens when the car gets hit in the sun. It helps to keep this whole area from caving in on the driver. So it's, again, another option that might seem like, oh, I don't really need it because I'm not doing this or that. But you never know. Racing is a dangerous sport. We all like it, but we know the dangers, and we want to be able to walk away and you know, say, all right, well, we wrecked the car, but we're still here, and we can do it again if we can afford to fix our car or buy a new car. But you don't want to wreck again. But you don't want to wreck again. You want to try not <laughs> to wreck again. So that just gives you an idea of what this little safety cell area is where the driver sits. Again, all of these things are put here just to protect the driver. They're not necessarily just here for making the chassis stiffer. That's a secondary thing to it, but the safety is the first and most important part of it. So as you can see again from the back, we have lots of deformations of the chassis. We have buckling in the floor here, shock tower, all of this energy that went into the side was so great that again, it tried to go all the way into the center of the car, but we had all this extra bracing which stops the energy from going any further. It just crushes in the area where we don't have the bracing. You have it there for chassis stiffness and trying to have a better feel from the chassis. The stiffer the chassis is, the more the driver, if the driver's in tune with his car and has good shocks and good, you know, everything, bushings and so on, they can feel the small changes that they make in suspension because the chassis is much stiffer. If a chassis has some flex to it because it doesn't have the extra bracing, some of the fine adjustments get lost, as in the chassis starts to bend and instead of you feeling the shock, you know, whatever movement or whatever adjustment you have on the shock, you may not notice it just because it gets absorbed into a little bit of flex here and there in the chassis, whether it's in the front of the chassis or in the back of the chassis. So again, these things serve two purposes. They serve safety purposes, having this bar that goes across to the two rear shock towers. People will see it as just a stiffness thing, but it didn't. Because in this case, the car took a huge hit in the side and it stops all of this, these rear sections from collapsing inward. And like I said, the safety is the most important part of it. The stiffness is the secondary part of it. You want to do both, obviously. So you take, you know, some safety. You take lots of safety and you take as much performance as you can out. Here we can see some more of the areas that took a lot of the energy because they're all ripped, deformed. These are all like the factory seams too. These are all factory seams. The floor and the back. Again, is buckled in a couple of spots, buckled even on the other side because the force is so great, it pushes everything over to one side. So is this fixable? It could be fixed, but in this case, it cost so much money to fix it that we decided to build a brand new car. So here dark. we are underneath the fun. car, and we can show you again more of this uh, deformation of the chassis because of all the force that came from this direction. We have sections of the chassis that are ripped apart at the seams. We have more buckling from things just getting crushed inward. Again, the driver sits essentially in this area, and as we can see, even the floor tore in this section because it took such a big force, but the general area where the driver sits is on unscathed. There's no damage in this, no buckling in this. It's all in areas away from the driver. And that's basically what you try to do is keep all of the bad things away from the driver. So driver sits here, driver safe. All these other areas are here just to absorb all the energy. Front, back of the car, the sides of the car, it's just to absorb the energy so that the driver doesn't take this huge impact 
which sometimes leads to head injuries and you know broken bones, whatever else happens while you crash. So sad. So sad. Huh. As you can see from the front, this is a different view of it. Again, the driver's side front chassis leg and how it took all of this energy and bent and buckled. So even with the um, the bar to the shock tower, it still pushed in. It still pushed in. So imagine what it would have been like if it wasn't there. This probably would have been, you know, another six to ten inches over. And then we can see the underside of the transmission tunnel. Again, it's all of that side impact that just has to go somewhere and it all gets absorbed into all of these pieces to essentially make it much softer impact for the driver. Sad. Um, and, and then also a lot of people think that you can cut a cage out of a car like this that's been crashed. Uh, would you recommend that in this case? I don't. Like I've done it before, cut them out, not to reinstall them, but you'll find out that because of all of the pushing and bending and so on, the cage does take some of the, the force. So when you go to cut the pipes on the cage, you'll find out that each piece becomes like a spring. You'll cut it and you'll, it'll pop apart essentially. If two pieces are together this way, when you cut it because of it being pulled or pushed whatever direction, the two pieces are going to spring apart from each other. So it's just... By the time you're done cutting it out of a car, trying to then get it into another car and then finding out that it's a little bit tweaked, it's just not worth it. And it's already been through a major impact. Why would you bother? Again, you're trying to save money for something that essentially could save your life and it's just not worth it in the long run. So you might as well just spend the extra money and get it done one more time, get it done correctly. Maybe add something different safety-wise that you learned during crashes. One of the things that we've learned is Unfortunately, I've crashed, my customers have crashed, and we've learned a lot over the years because of these crashes. We've had customers who flip cars, customers who hit walls, I've hit walls, all kinds of bad things happen. Every time one of these things happen, you don't just take it, throw it in the garbage, and say, I'm going to repeat the same thing. You look at it, you look at what you've learned from your crash, what can you improve, how can you make it safer for the driver, so that ultimately, no matter what happens, you try to keep the drivers as safe as possible. Again, building a better mousetrap. Cool. <sighs> sad. It's so sad. And yeah. then on this side, we have my new my new car, which is another silver 2002 M3. Kind of deja vu, because this one was literally the exact same thing. And we just spent the weekend prepping it, uh, taking all the sound deadening, and cleaning the seam sealer off of it, and taking the roof off. So uh, it'll be getting in cage next weekend. Really excited for that. Uh, yeah. Stay that is tuned. all. More racing to come. More racing to come. All right. That's all for today, folks.